Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be finding the maximum value of a rational function. f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 7 divided by x squared plus 2x plus 5 and we're going to find the maximum value of f of x. Now can we use calculus to find the maximum value? Absolutely. Can we use derivatives? Definitely. But we're going to be doing it differently. We're going to be using an algebraic approach. So let's get started. I'm going to start by setting f of x equal to m. All right, so that's going to be my first step. I'm going to set it equal to m. And basically, to find the maximum value of f of x, if I find the maximum value of m, then I'll be done. So let's go ahead and cross multiply both sides. And we should be getting x squared minus 4x plus 7 is equal to mx squared plus 2mx plus 5m. Okay, I'd like to put everything on the same side. So mx squared minus x squared. So it's going to be m minus 1x squared and then 2m plus 4x and then finally 5m minus 7 is equal to 0. Okay, now we're trying to find the maximum value of m and we got a quadratic equation in x but the coefficients are in terms of m. So I want this function to have real values obviously otherwise we can't really find the maximum or minimum value. So what we're going to do here is we're going to be looking for real values of x and how is that possible? We're going to be looking at the discriminant of this equation. So let's go ahead and write the discriminant. The discriminant of this quadratic equation is going to be b squared, discriminant is delta, I'm using the Greek letter here. So b squared minus 4ac. Okay, c is the constant. Okay, now let's go ahead and calculate this delta. Let's simplify as much as possible. This is going to be 4m squared plus 16m plus 16. And then this is going to be negative 4 times the quantity, 5m squared. So I should be getting negative 7m and negative 5m, which is going to give me negative 12m plus 7. Let's go ahead and distribute this and simplify. 4m squared plus 16m plus 16. And then I get negative 20m squared plus 48m minus 28. Let's go ahead and combine like terms and write our equation or for the discriminant, uh, 4m squared minus 20m squared is negative 16m squared here. And then 16m plus 48m, that should give me 64m. And finally, 16 minus 28 should be negative 12. Okay, now let's simplify this a little bit more. I can take out a common factor. In this case, that will be a negative 4. And I want to keep the m squared positive, so ne negative 4 would be a good one. And this gives me inside the parentheses 4m squared minus 16m plus 3. So what am I looking for? I want the real x values for this function. And this is the discriminant, right? And I want the discriminant to be non-negative. So in other words, my discriminant needs to be greater or equal to 0 so that my quadratic equation is going to have real solutions. Okay? And so we're going to be using this inequality to find the max and mean values for m. Now what is this supposed to mean? Well, we did get a quadratic inequality. So first of all, to get rid of the negative, let's go ahead and divide both sides by negative 4. And when you do, remember that the inequality sign will be changed. So in, instead of greater or equal to 0, it's going to be less than or equal to 0. Now, when you get a quadratic equation like this, basically you're talking about a parabola. Let's talk about this. And notice that the sum of the roots is positive, the product of the roots is positive. So you're kind of talking about two positive roots. doesn't really matter much here, but if you have a quadratic equation, right, like this, so you have a parabola, and you want this parabola, the y values, to be less than or equal to 0. So you're basically talking about being between the roots here. So if this is m1 and this is m2, uh, you have to have your m values needs to be in that interval so that this, exp uh, this expression here is going to be less than or equal to 0. So that's what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and find the roots first, m1 and m2. To find m1 and m2, 
we're going to solve this as a quadratic equation. So it's kind of like a quadratic within a quadratic. All right. So to be able to solve this, I can use the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula tells me m values are negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 256, minus 4 times a times c. Now, obviously, to make it a little easier on ourselves, and this is going to be 2a, we can just factor out a 16 here, obviously, because 256 is divisible by 16, and 4 times 4 is 16. So I can easily pull out a 16, which means I'm going to get a 4 outside the radical. And inside, since we divided by 16, this should be a 16, and this should be a 3. That means that my m values are going to look like this. 16 plus minus 4 times the square root of 13 all over 8. Obviously, this can be simplified because there is a common factor. Everything can be divided by 4. If you do that, you get 4 plus minus root 13 divided by 2. So these are the m values. Let's go ahead and write them down separately. So m1, the smaller value, is going to be this one. And the larger m value is going to be this one. And as I said earlier, if you want this quadratic to get negative or less than or equal to zero values, non-positive values, then you're, you have to be between m1 and m2. So you want m to be between these two values. Let's go ahead and write it down. First of all, I can write it like this. And then just replace m1 with 4 minus root 13 over 2. And this one with 4 plus root 13 over 2. Great. Now, remember, we were looking for the maximum value of f of x, which was equivalent to the maximum value of m. And here we did find it, actually, because we know that m is less than or equal to this value here. And this tells us the maximum value, because m cannot be greater than this value. So basically, maximum f of x, which is the same as maximum m, is going to equal 4 plus root 13 over 2. Notice that with this method, we did not have to find the x value, which makes the function uh, take a positive value. We directly found the maximum value. And also, it's an algebraic approach as opposed to a calculus approach. Not that I don't like calculus, but it's just an alternative. So this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.